Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, go down and click subscribe. If you're a return viewer or subscriber, thank you very much. I do appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. What we're going to talk about tonight is the Grandstream GDS 37. 10 and I'm going to show you how we wire it up and then we're going to log into the device and we are we're going to take a quick look at it. So what is the Grandstream GDS 3710? Well it's an HD video door system that can uh, be used and in, in conjunction with electronic strikes to let people in and out of doors. You can use it as a time clock, you can use it as a video doorbell, you can use it as a punch in punch out system. I mean the uses for this are are vast right and one of the cool things is that the video the camera inside of it is on VIF compliant so you can use this with any NVR it doesn't have to be used with a specific manufacturer anything that is on VIF compatible any NVR can use this so your options opened way up so when you get the 3710 what do you get in the box we will we'll go in a minute before we get um, over to the actual um, you know, viewing from the device, we'll go over and look at the data sheet. But what do you get in the box? In the box, you get this. Now this patch cable, I already attached it, but what this is, is this is the module that actually connects the device to the network. And so you can see on that side, that's where we hook in our PoE. And then you've got all kinds of different connections. This can be used with a weekend devices. It can also be used um, with um, devices with uh, door strikes where you just basically break the circuit right at the door. It's got all kinds of different options. Now, when you wire this up, that, that Ethernet uh, diagram on the side there may look a little weird, right? But what you do is on the blue and the brown, you actually put those wires, you twist those two wires together, and they go in that connection together. So you can see how I've got that wired up. And when we wire these up, we usually create these little tails and send them out with the device. All, the, all they have to do is plug it in, make sure that it works, and then their wiring person can do whatever they want. But you can see, you just follow the, the color diagram. And a lot of people get confused because on this block right here, on these blocks, you see that the, the brown is all one block. That's because you twist the wires together. You do the same thing with the blue, and then the green and the orange are completely broken out. And then this is the business end right here. These pins break, uh, or actually plug into the device. So this is the module. This thing is pretty important, and uh, you'll see this when we plug it into the device here in just a minute. But that is how you wire it. I see a lot of questions about how you wire this, and that is how you wire it. And when I send this out, I will leave this patch cable um, attached to it so that the customer just has to plug it in and go. Then uh, you always get a copy of the GPL with, uh, with Grandstream. You get a drill template. I love it when manufacturers provide these drill templates. You get a bag of accessories, which includes some security plugs for the bottom. You've got some, well, one thing you may not have seen is on the back of this, there's a weatherproof uh, grommet that the wire goes through. So you get a couple different size uh, grommets. You get mounting screws, you get a sample fob. And so you get all of the hardware that you need. You get a lens uh, cleaning microfiber, and then you get an RFID card. So uh, I'll show you a couple of these things. This is the unit itself. It ships with this uh, plastic cover. So I'm going to take, take that off. And then it also ships with this other weatherproofing uh, strip, which you'll see too. There are holes in the bottom for the security screws there. But I'm going to pull this off. There's a sticker on the front that's going to have our default username and password. So you've got a 180 degree uh, camera there. You've got this weatherproof. The whole device is weatherproof. And then you've got this pad that lights up with the backlight behind it. Uh, the enclosure itself is steel. Here are those security screws that you're going to see here because there's also a mounting plate in here. 
Um, and then on the back, this is where that module plugs in. You're going to see that here in just a minute. This cover came with it. And then this is the plate that gets mounted to the wall. So you mount this to the wall and then the device hangs on it. So I'll show you that, what that kind of looks like here. So you've got your device, you've got your plate, and uh, I'd have to loosen these screws down here at the bottom, but um, it goes like this. So that slides in there. And then if these uh, screws down here were loosened, which I think I can do that, real quick, just loosen these. I'm gonna take them out almost all the way for this to sit correctly. And then once you do that, now you see the mounting plate is actually there. And then um, you would tighten this up. And then these little rubber plugs that are in the bag, I don't know if, you, yeah, you can see that little rubber plug right there, it goes in the bottom to keep these kind of like out of sight, out of mind, keep the weather off of them, things like that. So, to fire this thing up, once you get everything wired in, there's also, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll show you here in just a second. So we're just gonna plug this module in, and it is keyed um, so that, it, that these pins plug into the receiver that's in, on the bottom, if you can see that. That's a, you know, the other side of this. And it plugs in just like that. And then if you're gonna mount it, you're going to put four screws in here to keep this nice and weather tight. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to plug this in. All right, so real quick before we get too uh, into the weeds on this, here is the Grandstream website for this. And it does have video resolutions up to 1080p. It has a built-in RFID chip reader for keyless entry. SIP streaming to NVRs, video intercom stations, IP phones, or smartphones simultaneously. So... A lot of times we'll set this up so that if somebody comes up and they hit the intercom button, uh, what it'll do is it'll ring every phone in a, in a ring group and everybody can actually see who is at the door. They can start a conversation with them or they can also buzz them in. It has a weatherproof and vandal resistant metal casing, 180 degree wall to wall uh, camera, motion detection, integrated PoE, and you saw that, built in microphone and speaker, and it is OnVIF Profile S compliant. It is only a 10-100 uh, device. And I'm trying to think if there's any other like high level things that you need to see about this. Uh, yeah, and it does work with all the GXP phones, the GRP phones, the GXV phones, and the Wave Mobile. Um, and it will actually work with a lot of other manufacturers, a lot of other manufacturers' phones as well. So... Here is the device. We're gonna log into this and I'm gonna pull up my password real quick. I don't know if it's gonna make us change it or not, but if it does, we will definitely do that. Did not make us change it. So we, we can see we are on uh, 1.0.7.4. I'll have to check and see where that's at in the firmware uh, lineage. We can actually check this and then uh, reload the page and it'll go out depending on how the configuration is set up but let's hop over to this live view and we'll go over to profile number one it tells us operation successful and now there's no light on in there but you can see uh, all of the blinking lights from the rack uh, looks like time and date are off a little bit but let me go turn the light on so you can get a little bit of a better idea what we're looking at So this is, uh, this is laying on top of a rack. And so you can see electrical panel over here. Here's a production rack. 
and uh, it's much more impressive when it's actually mounted on a door. You'll have to take my word for that. And you do have three different view modes here. So that was one. This is two. And they're going to be different resolutions. Um, and this one is three. So you can see that three is the lowest resolution of all of them. All right, under our door system settings, this also has alarms. Um, it's got all of the configuration that you're going to need for unlocking the door. When the door uh, doorbell is pressed, it can also take a snapshot. It can take a snapshot and send it uh, by email or FTP on both the doorbell or the door open. We can select the number of snapshots that we take when somebody does enter the door. How long do we want to leave the door unlocked? And then here's how you set up um, who is going to get called when you push the doorbell button. Here you can see we can also do DTMF uh, tones to open the door. We can do desk, uh, guest pins, all kinds of options. It's got a card issuing mode, so you can uh, program multiple cards instead of just doing one at a time. Um, there's the Wigan settings down there. Here's our uh, keep door open. And then you, you got an emergency pin uh, to disable the keep door open. Card management. So all of our users that we have loaded in here. So if you want to use this as like a time clock, you would load all those folks in there, issuing them, issue them a fob or a, a pin or a card. Our group management. You can uh, do scheduling. We can set up our holidays. If you've uh, dealt with PBXs, these options should look pretty familiar. Under our system settings, uh, yes, our time zone is definitely wrong. So before this gets shipped out, we'll definitely set that up. Uh, we can change to a static IP here. Our access settings tell us how we can access services on the device. So this web interface is HTTPS, um, the uh, RTSP port. All those good things. GDS manager, so you can actually manage a whole fleet of these um, using GDS manager, which is a free software that Grandstream provides. Here's where we can change our password. Now this account here is the SIP account uh, that this is going to use to be connected to your PBX. And you can have up to four accounts. Then we've got phone settings. Here's all of our video settings, so we can change the profile. You can see by default it's H.264 with a uh, 1920 by 1080, so a 1080p resolution. And that is our main profile. We can set our bit rate, all of the image quality settings there. We can change our on-screen display. Here's the CMOS settings for the, uh, the camera. Audio settings, so we can change the codec. We can change the doorbell volume and we can do custom ringtones. We can also do uh, privacy masks inside of the video. So if you've got regions where you can't have, um, you know, the, the camera on, like, I don't know, maybe for some reason there's a restroom door or something where you've got to do privacy masks, you can configure that here. Here's all of our different alarm. So here's enable motion detection. And then again, we can configure the, the uh, region. We can select alarm schedules. It's got two digital inputs. It's got a digital output. And then it does have a silent alarm mode, hostage code mode, and a tamper alarm. And it uses magnets to know whether the device is being tampered with, just like other cameras. And then it can do certain things if it thinks it's being tampered with. So you've got your alarm schedule, your alarm action list, and here's the, the detail. So we can upload to alarm center, audio alarm to a SIP phone. And this is, of course, if there's an alarm, send an email, audio alarm, alarm output to an alarm system, upload a snapshot. Here's our alarm phone list. So we could put 911 in here. We could put a, a dispatch phone number, all kinds. It looks like we can have 10 uh, numbers in our list. Here's our email and FTP settings. So this is where we would enter the email server that we want to send through. Our maintenance screen. Yep, this is uh, where we're going to change this to firmware.grandstream.com. Configuration settings and then miscellaneous settings down here for DHCP options. 
We've got reboot and reset. And so we can do a factory default from here. You got your debug log, data maintenance, system health alerts, event notification setup. So we can send things to a log server and then uh, using a log server then send different emails or do different types of alerting. Here's your event log. We can upload uh, actual SSL certificates to, to this. And then here is our system status. So if you're looking for something, um, you know, that you can um, buy that's really economical, I think this thing is less than $400 last time I checked. It can tie into any any PBX because it's standards based, but of course would work best with a Grandstream system and Grandstream phones. But like I said, it will work with mostly any platform. So if you want to know more about this and you want to see some more detailed setups and things like that, let me know down in the comments and I will add that uh, to our list of things to do because I do have, I have a GDS 3705, which doesn't have the camera. I have that here um, for the lab. So we could do some more videos on that. So let me know if you want to see that. If you've got any other questions about this or any other Grandstream product, let me know down in the comments. Go to willyhow.com reach out to us, whether it's consulting or general questions, we'll try to take care of you. Um, and if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. Those links are all down below. Once again, if you do need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to support the channel um, by uh, using all of our affiliate links and the Patreon that's coming back, those links are down below. They don't change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks to the channel. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.